Hello, it's Scott Manley here, sitting inside a new and flashy looking cockpit, including integrated multifunction display provided by a raster prop monitor, I believe, which is now integrated into B9 Aerospace. B9 Aerospace, if you remember, was this amazing pack of parts which I use all the time. And uh, what happened was around October last year, the developer stopped working on it. The developer actually joined Squad and then had to leave for complicated reasons, which I won't go into here. But after an epic journey of fan patching, community maintenance, and uh, discussions about updating it, finally we have an experimental release of the new version of B9, and it adds a ton of new parts aiming at building larger spacecraft. And so this is something I knocked together in the vehicle assembly building, or at least the, the space plane hangar to be specific. Uh, as you can see, these parts are huge. You can make them hollow, you can make them fuel tanks. These are the HX fuselage system, which is designed essentially to build giant battle cruisers or carriers or experimental probe spacecraft that are exploring the galaxy. They are huge. The largest parts are are 8 meters by 8 meters, probably bigger than that even. It's Frankly, it is stunning. These are the special engines that have been added. They are sci-fi engines that work using uh, electrical power from these nuclear reactors. They also require fuel, but they get really good specific impulse. Or they can be switched to high thrust uh, rocket mode as well. So you can get high thrust or you can get high efficiency from a single engine. But yes, this is something I knocked together quickly and it barely exploits the range of building styles available from this pack. So let's go back to the hangar and take a look. Okay, so back in the hangar, we have this HL cockpit. Now, the developers of B9 are now uh, back nine, obviously, to various and stupid Chris. The number of parts has actually been reduced in some ways. You see, so I can uh, drop on this fuselage section and then right click on it and get the different variants. So you can have one with liquid fuel, one with fuel and oxidizer, and one with uh, RCS fuel. And this one just is nothing, I guess. But similarly, you can do this with many of the parts. We can have like a the side body adapter. Now, the side body adapter works in a different way, but again, different tank setups available to you. Some of them have different graphics. Some of them, on the other hand, some of them don't. I think this one might just provide, yeah, it doesn't actually provide any visual changes to it. I'm, not, I'm presuming this saves a bit of memory by reducing the number of models that need to be in the system. Uh, but even then, even with that, you are going to probably run into memory limitations. Uh, and I found that I was actually crashing the game repeatedly until I uh, installed the texture compression mod. They've integrated a lot of other features into this. Um, this is, of course, the Mark II fuselage cockpit. And in structural now, we have a nice little crew tank which has which lets you carry crew on board. This is of course very similar to the Space Plane Plus mod. Although the fuel the, the cargo bays here have end walls so you can't join them together to create arbitrary length cargo bays here. Again, these ones, uh, these ones you can't actually... Well, these ones you can change the tank setup. So you can add a limited amount of fuel even although you've got uh, cargo bays in here. That's very cool. But these are all parts you've seen before. Let's actually take a look at the HX fuselage system. So the HX fuselage system starts on like the third page, I guess. And they are huge. This is a smaller part. This is obviously a multi-directional coupler that lets you stick stuff out and build up truly massive things. Uh, you might find right now that you need to use part clipping. You'll find that quite a lot. They have a... Uh, Emp hollow sections, of course, where you right-click on them and the part variants tell you how open it's going to be. And, of course, if you want, say, that with a hole on the top, you just pick it up and you rotate it until the, uh, until the section that is opened is shown to you. That is, of course, structurally sound there, but don't necessarily... <laughs> These things aren't hugely strong, and you will find that they have a tendency to fall apart if you're not careful. That is the new style docking ports that are for these. So you can, of course, make these into 
parts that join together if you want to use multi-docking on larger parts. Did I say larger parts? Yes. You can build up the HX Universal module. This is huge. This is massive on every level. And what you can also see here is that it's actually kind of hard to make the thing uh, hook up correctly sometimes. So we have these parts here and I am having a terrible time. Come on, get in there. Why does it not? Ah, there we go. There, it's joined up to one of them. That's good. Uh, and if you have trouble making these things join, you can actually disable all the different attachment nodes to make sure you're only attaching with, uh, say, the center nodes. This really, really helps. Also, having editor hook tools helps a whole lot. So there we go. Now we have a single block there. This is the least aerodynamic aircraft ever built. Again, you have hollow sections, of course, doing the same thing. You have to, of course, disable connectors in both directions. Again, disable these. So this can take a really, really long time, which explains why I don't really have something truly epic to show you. This one has some nice variations when you do the part variations. You basically have fuel or structure, but the fuel tanks actually provide a completely different looking model there. The universal modules, and we can get these situated in the corners here, they also have part variants, which again, slightly di have different structural models for different looks. And then you have a liquid fuel version where you can see the tanks inside. That's an RCS tank model and a capacitor model, right? It's basically a giant battery pack if you need that kind of thing. So, you know, these are great for building giant spacecraft giant exploration ships you know the, the they're not really made for the realistic airplanes that we've been seeing built with b9 these are made for epic starships and epic voyages lots to be done here what else do we have uh, yeah the hollow structural module that's the one that you can probably use for your landing bays if you want to do that and yeah, oh, the reinforced docking ports are even bigger. We actually have a docking port that is the size of a small moon, I believe. <laughs> if you want to build a Borg cube, this is going to be the, the item of choice. B9, although it is experimental and, you know, if you're not into dealing with experimental stuff, you probably shouldn't download it just yet. Oh, so you also have these nice corner pieces here, which can be used uh, just like this. And again, there are variants on this. So you can go in and, you co of course, you can have fuel variants. You can have RCS variants. You can also have attachment like tank variants. So you can grab those and then grab yourself, say, uh, an FLT-800. And it should just pop on there. And allow you to build more cool looking spacecraft if that is your thing. I don't know if that's going to work correctly. It might not actually be joined on. Uh, this is why editor tools is extremely useful because you can disable side attachment and things like that on a part by part basis. Anyway, let's actually take a look at the cockpits. Okay, so this is the new uh, aircraft, the new stock aircraft that is included. It is the HDCV Stapledon Heavy Cargo SSTO, presumably single stage to orbit rather than silly string transporter Oliver. Um, anyway, yes, it's very cool from the outside, I'm sure you'll agree, but from the inside, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, everything is more awesome in many ways. Do you know what these buttons do? No, I do not. Uh, I'm going to have to figure these things out. I wonder if I hit the stage button. Oh, it works. There's a bunch of things that actually work. Let's throttle down to zero because I'm not ready. We have switches for action groups so I can uh, toggle cockpit lights. And let's see if that... Oh, cockpit lights are on. You see that? I can toggle the cargo bay doors. That's four. Action group four. Ah, brilliant, huh? So all this stuff now works. You have a raster prop monitor obviously integrated so you can get all your info and mission info. You have cameras, although I think uh, internal, ex internal camera. So there we go. We can move it around to see what's going on and we can look down. There we go. So we can get a look at the runway just to make sure that we're actually coming down in the correct direction. 
Uh, I've never really used Raster Prop Monitor, largely because it's something designed for mod developers rather than, say, people to have built, you know, in their in their home builds. It's very nice to have, of course, if you want to get the full IVA experience. There's your uh, there's your artificial horizon, your orbit indicator. Let's we should probably put some of this on the front. Yeah, we should probably put the artificial horizon there and flight. Yes, there's the heads-up display thing, and we can put our orbit info in there. And then, of course, pressing V lets us switch over to somebody else. We can bring up the whatever the target on there. Landing assistant, takeoff assistant, landing assistant. We've got all these things. Great. So we have takeoff assistant. That's great. We won't need landing assistant. This is artificial horizon things. Important papers and crosswords. Again, more things everywhere. We also have this nice abort button, which presumably works. I'm not going to push the gear button, but I guess I can push the brakes and the brakes will come off. There. Okay, so let's actually try throttling up now. Oh, yes. I can feel this is going to be fun, huh? So we have the takeoff assistant right here, showing us how fast we're moving. I'm not sure what that means. That's possibly not good. Let's enable SAS right now as well. And RCS. Okay, so altitude is 72. We're probably going to need to pick up some real speed on this thing before we get off the runway here. Let's take a look around at everything flying past. Oh, look at the crew sitting there in the back. We also have a dude sitting in the back who all he can see is that. But I'm going to switch to these guys because these are really the important ones. Okay, what's my speed? Ground speed, 110. I think I need a bit more speed here. Uh-oh, there's a bit of a wobble going on there. And are we ready? Pull up! Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Am I getting altitude? Altitude is increasing. That's a good sign. That is a good sign. We are starting to get into the air, but my ground speed is not increasing particularly quickly. In fact, my ground speed is decreasing. This does not seem to be the most uh, agile single stage you know, aircraft or whatever that we've built so far. But maybe once I get up above the atmosphere, things will work. Oh, you know what that noise is, I'll bet you. No, I thought for a second I might have left the cargo bay doors open, but apparently not. Maybe I'll close and put the landing gear up. Uh, gear. Brilliant. Gear comes up. Maybe that'll help. Probably not, because this is stock. I don't have fancy aerodynamics installed at this time. So yeah, this is B9 updated. It is, of course, only available for testing. You can go to the forums and grab it. And uh, you will find many, many bugs, but perhaps some of you will build awesome spacecraft and the bugs will be worth it. Oh, yeah, losing altitude once again. Despite having SAS on, I am unable to really keep this thing, the nose up on this thing. Come on, keep that altitude going upwards. I want to get into space. Anyway, yeah, check it out. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.